IB was my third choice. First choice. First choice. First choice. My first choice. My first choice, sadly. My last choice. Last choice. It was always my last choice. IHS is, I mean, predominantly white, and I walk down the hallways and I see everyone. I mean, IB really isn't representative of what Berkeley High is and of what kind of kids come here. As a person of color in one of those classrooms, the lack of diversity can sometimes be like a, a really like huge affront to like how I function in the classroom on a day-to-day -day basis. To be in a minority in IB is kind of uncomfortable because most of my classes are full of white kids and when uh, an issue of race comes up in the class uh, I'm often the one to have to speak for my race because I'm like one of the only people there. It feels weird to be black in IB because like I know that like me and the people that I'm in class with are not like the same like everyone has their own group. There are students of color who for them being a minority in an all-white space is really going to be uncomfortable um, they're going to feel isolated I think that's a big issue. I think that that kind of like isolation, that lack of community, and like not really being able to identify with your classmates in any way, shape, or form. That's the issue that students of color have all the time. I don't know if when you go into a place, you look around the room and you, there isn't anybody like me here. It's very disturbing. It just doesn't feel good to feel like you're an outsider. Um, and I feel like that's a struggle that black people go through all the time. And like the fact that IB is known as being this like smart, hard school and it's mostly white people doesn't make me feel good. <laughs> and being in an all white space as a person of color is gonna be difficult. And then when you're adding that on top of it being your educational space and you know, six hours a day, it gets really tiring at one point. I think a lot of the people of color in my IB classes they didn't choose IB as their first choice. Well, when I filled out the paper where I put my choices, I put AC first, and then like AHA, CAS, AMPS, and then BIHS, and then I gave it to the lady, and she said, you have to put BIHS as your second choice if you put AC as your first choice. And I was like, that sounds fake, but okay. And then I got BIHS, and she was like, well, it was your second choice. And I was like, because you made me. I think I think they placed me because you know they need they want people of color and sadly I was one of the uh, one of their victims. Uh, yeah, I just want to get switched out. Well, I just didn't have a good experience in IB, so I'm now an AC. I start a year with six kids of color, or six black kids specifically in my class, and I end it with three. I mean, two out of the four students of color in our class left. Like, how, like, that's not a coincidence. And they were just like, I don't feel welcome here. This is too, this is too much for me. I don't feel like this is the type of environment that I want to be in. Freshman year, I talked a lot and there were a lot of people like me. And as time continued and people left IB, it was like less and less and I talked less and less. So if they're not speaking up, then the other students are like, oh, they just don't like to talk. Like, I'll just talk instead. If they're not speaking up, that probably means that they don't really know what they're talking about. They don't really know what's going on. They're not paying attention. Everyone else is learning this. Everyone else is agreeing with it. Like, you're not going to feel comfortable to say something about it. And that's not really my responsibility. Um, that is the teacher's responsibility. And uh, some of what I have to do, and I'm not always good at it, is getting white students to listen and share the work burden. And I've had experiences in classes where white students, when there's group work, a student will do all of the work and not include other people in doing the work. Or they will assume that students of color don't want to work. There's other things like where the same students will raise their hand all the time or students of color will raise their hands in class and um, this happens a lot where um, 
predominantly white students will raise their hands to correct them. Yeah, sometimes the white kids in my IV classes specifically act like I don't really know what I'm doing at all or like I don't do work or like I don't read or something. I think part of it has to do with how I how I look and the color of my skin. Yeah, I feel like some white kids do like look at me and and even some of my teachers look at me and they think less of me because of, of my of my race and like they expect less from me. And that in the combination with it being so not diverse just creates a terrible environment for a person of color. It puts us students in a in a situation where we don't we don't feel open, like we don't feel that we can express who we are in a way that goes back to our own history and then like moving forward with our generation with all these issues with like Black Lives Matter and everything like with our school like when we were able to come together like that in Ivy that's not there. I literally just know people from my classes and if my classes are all white then I'm only gonna know white people. So that's an issue. So everyone who's in IV classes only hangs out with white people. So then people who only hang out with white people don't know anything about you know the world because that's not how the world really is. In a classroom that's predominantly white you lose a lot of culture and cultivate a lot of ignorance because we're not learning about different types of cultures, um, different kinds of people. We're not interacting with anyone other than our own racial circle, which is a waste of time. Even though I love the diversity on the campus, I would love to see the same level of diversity represented in each of the classrooms. We gotta talk about like race and race issues and stuff like that all the time, but it's only the white people who talk about it. And it, it just kind of feels counterintuitive. I think it is harder to talk about the realities that people of color face because so few people in IB really understand that. When you talk about racism with other black people, it makes you feel more justified for feeling that way. And just like having that environment where you can relate to people and people are like, oh, I experienced this. And it's like, whoa, me too. That sucks. Like, this isn't okay. And um, it makes you want to do something about it. When it's mostly kids of color, like that's when I, branch out and express my opinions and feel more comfortable around because you know there's more people like me and they can relate to me. Just more variety of different races would be amazing because there's people who have all these different stories and these backgrounds of their ancestors and everything and then taking that into the learning environment you're able to connect that to these new things that you discover. Since I came in the program one of the things that I really wanted to work on was making the curriculum more diverse. One of the big problems is that a lot of the literature that that we're required to read is um, is largely white or male or both. Then I'm stuck in this small school where I'm just learning like these academic things that personally I don't feel that I'm able to connect with. We are just not accommodating of these like of kids of color and then we're not supporting them in the ways that we need to especially not in IB like there's just there's there aren't the resources there isn't su their support there isn't a net for these kids. We need to think about the structures in the class where that we have control over to find ways to make people comfortable. I consciously group students of color together so that when they're in groups, they're not the only, they're not the representative for whatever group they belong to, because I don't think that that's a fair burden. I think what's really, really important is to talk about the issues. Um, I think it's really hard for teachers sometimes to talk about racism because um, students might get worked up, but you have to take that risk, it's hard and you'll get a lot of pushback from students, but I, I do think they want to talk about it, and I think we should. We really can't overlook these types of issues because they're just continuously dividing us. It feels divided in IB. It feels very divided and it sucks. I don't really have a good time in school because of IB. If you choose like a couple of kids of color to be in IB classes, just I feel like it's just gonna screw them up. It's just gonna single them out and they're gonna feel uncomfortable in every single one of their classes. You look around and all of a sudden you realize you're like one of two black kids and it's kind of like, okay, well, like, what does that like mean for me and my own identity? Sometimes you feel isolated. Like, 
you're just different and you don't really see the appeal of being in that environment. Yeah. We have talked over and over again and I think we all know that this is a really, really big problem that, that needs to be solved. And whether it's you, like me personally, or my family members or my friends, um, it's definitely something that needs to be talked about and it's so hard when you have the majority of people of color silenced.